Uh, so, uh, this is Jay Rodman, and I'm continuing to play through Bard's Tale 3 on the Commodore 64. Um, we ha I've already created my party of seven adventurous ladies, and they are um, still very green. And uh, they're starting. They're they're fighting the denizens of the ruined Scarabray to build experience, uh, to test their their metal with a TT. They're not. They're, they're, I don't think they have any electric guitars or anything going on. It's just not. It's just not my style. Um, getting started in this game is somewhat forgiving. Most of the monsters you can find in the uh, over the the wilderness and the town are pretty defeatable with your starting equipment. Here I'm attacking even though they're not in range yet because they don't have any ranged attacks and they will move into range and then be hit before they have a chance to do anything. And then I can take their delicious treasure. Oh, and you can see in the sky here that it's gotten a little darker. I'm going to press question mark and check. It's now dusk. At night, uh, slightly more difficult enemies come out. Not drastically more difficult, but somewhat. And as a result, I am going to go try to shelter the night in the refugee camp. In addition, um, your mages, your uh, spellcasters, that's the puma, I remember, that's slightly harder, I'm running away. Um, the spellcasters regain spell points. Oh, let me show you what that, that little random text. The flat grassy plain stretches peacefully out in all directions, a viper. Okay, I didn't finish reading that. Vipers breathe? I don't think I knew that. They have a breath weapon, which means they try to hit everyone. It's like they're a small dragon or something. They must have... Vipers must be different where they come from. I don't know. Spit poison, maybe? Anyway, uh, this is the Vale of Lost Warriors. That's where we are. There's This world is actually very small. Um, and it has a number of sort of notable locations on it, like the Vale of Lust Warriors and Cold Peak and etc. None of those locations are useful to us yet. Uh, so the way night and day works is whenever you leave the refugee camp, it's the beginning of the day. I guess when you go in, you, you sleep off whatever the night terrors are. So it's early morning whenever you leave, uh, which puts you at a time where um, there's a lot of day before you, and there's a lot of spell point regenerating to be had, both of which are very good for level one, um, a level one party with the default equipment. Now, are the nighttime vipers any different, or do they all breathe? I keep forgetting to use my bards. No, they all breathe. I do not know why I am repelling these attacks, because I took some terrible luck scores, and these are level 1, and it's failing on every... May maybe viper breathing is sort of a theoretical attack. Maybe it's just like breathing heavily at me, or... or... like making rude gestures. So here's my f 
first drops, and we got a whole lot at once. We got a robes, which I think is entirely valueless, because um, it is the worst armor, and the people who would want to use it already have robes, so I'm just throwing it away, because there's nowhere to sell items and no reason I want more robes. Robes don't wear out. I don't remember who picked things up. This is one of the nuisances of the game. It's um, uh, When you pick up equipment it goes into someone's pile and it tells you who and you better remember or then you have to go fish. I'm going to equip this longbow. Uh, it doesn't actually help me, but um, later I might find some arrows. Oh, that's the... Those, those are the spirits I bought earlier. Uh, who is the scale armor? Someone got scale armor. Here, scale armor. Now, th they already have scale armor, but... I think someone started out without scale armor, namely um, my rogue. Oh, but it cannot equip it. That's what that other symbol means. So let's try the bard. I know that scale armor is the best bards can have. I don't know whether they start them out with it. They do. That is. Um, reasonable. So the scale armor is worthless to me and I'm discarding it. Oh well. Okay, now I should do what I should have done for all along is have my bard who's three casts. You have a choice of six different songs. Incidentally, Robin's Tune lets you run away a lot, which is not surprising. Safety song, uh, kind of oddly similar to Sir Robin's Tune, um, prevents random encounters or, more powerfully, prevents summons in an encounter. Sometimes they have different effects in combat. Uh, Sanctuary score always lowers your armor class. Bring around ballad heals your party members in combat. I can't remember what it does outside of combat. It's not worth doing. Uh, Ram up dual time increases spell regeneration po point rate out of combat. In combat, it makes you attack faster. Uh, Rochwood Relity is weird. Um, out of combat, it makes a light without casting spells, so you can see in anti-magic zones and stuff. In combat, I have no memory. Anyway, we're doing Sanctuary Score so that we have slightly better armor. And you can see there's this nice uh, note symbol that appears. I don't actually know whether I'm getting audio recorded. I'll have to do some tests later. Um, but uh, there is a very laid-back little melody playing, which is rather nice compared to the very garish uh, music of the 8-bit um, Bard's Tale on the C64 and Apple II. It's very tinny and obnoxious. Oh, one enemy. That's perfect. Perfect to be killed. And killed it is. Uh, it's also kind of funny how in Bard's Tale 1, enemies gave you count experience points counts like, um, you know, 7 or 12. Maybe you killed a whole lot of them, you might get 122. Uh, in this game, to start off with, they're giving you like well over 100 apiece. They just want you to get on with it. Uh, in a sense, this game was very much designed for people to play after they had taken their party through Bard's Tale 1 from beginning to end and then imported them into Bard's Tale 2 and taken them through Bard's Tale 2 from beginning to end and then importing them into Bard's Tale 3. It's kind of funny how emulators capture the t 
terribleness of the Commodore typing experience. Like if you if your keystrokes overlap a bit, they they don't tend not to register. So if you've um, finishing pressing down the P on VOPL when you've started pressing the L, it sort of drops a character, which is a thing that just doesn't happen on modern computers, and it's just a little mind bending because you know the modern computer you're typing onto handles that just fine, but th th they're they're faithfully emulating the badness of the old platform. I mean, I guess you have to if you want to make all the software work perfectly, like games that would care exactly about how the keystrokes worked and stuff, but uh, it's just so strange. Uh, I didn't actually, in my attempting to load my Grisnax um, character, I wanted to look at the experience point total, and I kept forgetting to do so. Okay, 1697. We're getting close to the 2000 mark. Oh, I didn't even get to move, and I already have another enemy to kill. Okay. Uh, except it hurt me. That's so rude. Huh, it has a fair number of hit points. Okay, uh, we're now up to around 1800. Oh, I think a war axe is an upgrade for someone. Oh, a plate arm armor is definitely an upgrade. A halberd is also definitely an upgrade. Okay, the halberd is probably the most important of those things that we acquired. Uh, in this game, bards cannot equip... I think that's always true in all of the games, I think. Bards cannot equip halberds, which are misspelled in all of the games. Uh, in English, a halberd is B-E-R-D, but um, I think it's sort of a joke. So the halberd is going to go to Grisnak with that ridiculous 19th strength score to maximize... Oh, 18 strength? Whatever. Close enough. Um, this broadsword, I think, is useless at this point. Uh, I suppose it's slightly faster to look at equipment by using use. Because it doesn't load the image. I think it's actually possible to somehow, like, I think there's an option to say, don't, don't load images. But uh, it's going to be some kind of arbitrary keystroke that I don't remember. Okay, so the war axe will go to a lady oak shield. The plate armor um I guess can only be used by paladin and the warrior. So uh I'll give it to the warrior in the first slot because I suspect the first slot gets attacked slightly more. This bard sword is trash. This broadsword is trash, rather. Blade armor, we're going to equip. Scale armor we've already established is not useful. Uh, this war axe, I think, is slightly better than the broadsword, but I'm not sure, so I'm just going to keep the broadsword for now. I keep saying bard sword because there is a bard sword. And. Um, you spend a lot more time with bard swords than broad swords. So as you can see, I'm just moving forward. The world loops around. What do we get for question mark? Oh, we actually get the exact position for question mark. We don't need any spell to locate ourselves on the overworld. World is kind of an overstatement map. But in dungeons, of course, they... Well, maybe not, of course, I don't know. In dungeons, the question mark uh, does not tell you where you are. Although, 
uh, this game did ship with a relatively simple auto map feature. I'm just wandering around, uh, collect, waiting to be attacked effectively. Here's one of the other special spots. Deeply hidden and verdant shadows. This grove is quiet and feels very peaceful. There's nothing you can do in those locations yet. Um, but, uh, you know, the first thing I did when I played this game for the first time is I busily created myself a grid map of this relatively small um, overworld. I actually am sort of trying to recover all my maps off a backup drive so I can show them in the context of playing the game, but for now there's not a lot of mapping actually in the sense that it's relatively easy to find yourself. Oh, I guess I could show I'll show the the um provided map of the overworld uh soon. Probably next session. Huh, we barely scratched that thing. And it hit me for four. That's that's um that's impertinent. How am I doing one point of damage with a halberd and eighteen strength? It just seems wrong. Remember these numbers, though. Right now we're doing one damage and four damage. Uh, that will not be the case for ever. Okay, and now I'm pretty sure I'm over the experience point target I need. Oh, another war axe. Maybe my bard can use that. Whip. Still not throwing away the broadsword because I'm still kind of unsure if it's better. Sometimes I move the wrong way because I'm using the wrong keys. In this game, this is long before the era of WASD. Um, in this game, you move with the very similar. Oh, look, I accidentally walked into a building that I should have gone into a long time ago. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show that again. So this is the way into the town as you step forward. There's all these little buildings that have basically nothing in them except for the chance for an encounter. Here's the chance for an encounter, two wildcats. For some reason, I think it's dangerous and we're trying to run away. And failing. Attack and defend and cast spells. I just typoed on my vorpal plating and accidentally didn't do it again. There we go. Advance, we miss, and hit, and it's not dead, which is not a good sign. I'm kind of going to do an in for the penny, in for a penny, in for a pound error here and just keep fighting because I already spent time and spell points on it. And I foolishly believe I can't, I'm unlikely to die. Which I'm sure will, I'll be dispelled of that illusion soon enough. Eight damage, holy crap. Okay, I'm running away. Look at that, I did another 12. Oh, I killed it. And I killed it. Okay, well, I guess I ran away too, too late. They're already dead. Okay. Yeah, so um, lots of rooms in here. Um, qu qu quick fix is my healing spell for. Quick fix again. Okay, 
that's good enough for now. And the do the house you're most likely to go into probably because it's like the one right in front of you is the special building. This is the sort of storage building. Who and um, it comes pre-populated with a bunch of items that I totally forgot about. So you have armor upgrades and uh, weapon upgrades and um, long bows and arrows and a wine skin and even some magic items. Um, so Grizznax is going to take a bow because that way she can attack things at range. Um, Lady Oakenshield is taking a halberd. She doesn't have one yet. And a plate armor because she doesn't have one of those yet either. My bard song just ran out, incidentally. Uh, I think I'm going to ensure that my um, row gets one of the bows for now. Um, the wine skin should be taken by my lush, the bard, and she'll also take the fire horn because this is it's a magical instrument only bards can use it. Um, harmonic gems are instant magic point refills. Uh, I don't actually need these yet, and I'm just going to leave them here. Um, I will give... I think the rogue cannot use the halberd. We'll find out shortly. But she's going to take... Uh, bow and arrows. Uh, I'm gonna give my the lamps to my mages because in my mind mages are where light comes from because usually I'm having spells cast so it's easier for me to remember that's where I stashed the lamps. Soothing balm I think is healing. Uh, I don't really remember. Youth potion is definitely to cure aging which I don't feel the need to carry around. Um, it's usually not an emergency when you get withered, and I feel like I'm more likely to remember to use it if I have to remember it's here. Somehow things in my inventory that are special and I don't use very often, I forget about. So let's let's uh let's look through that loot I just got. Okay, equip that longbow and I've got some arrows to shoot for anything out of range. Uh, the halberd I can equip, which means I can drop this war axe and this broadsword, because the halberd is definitely better. Uh, which, if you don't know, you can just fight a bunch with it and you'll see the numbers are better. It's a little bit of a um, less focused damage range, so it's a little more spiky, but it's absolutely better on average. Um, I'm gonna actually. Oh, I have to. I have to use it. I, have to, I wanna drink those spirits so I can. Um, do another song, because when she's not drunk enough, she can't play. As the bards level up, uh, they have less of a need for alcohol? I don't know exactly how that works. Okay, so little little cross symbol means uh, Halberd is not for rogues, so I'm going to hand it over to surprisingly, monks who are happy to use almost any weapon. They just <clears throat> um I don't know. They are better without it after they get good. Uh, the bow I'm going to hand to my bard. I don't know why, because the fire horn's way better. Okay, it's changing my mind. Uh, 
this is going to go over to my monk for now. I don't know if you monks can use bows. Let's find out. You don't actually have to um, <coughs> equip arrows. You equip the bow and then you use the arrow. If you don't have a bow equipped, it kind of goes, what are you trying to do? And it gives you a fail. Okay, halberd equipped. Short sword dropped. I guess bar monks can use bows. I mean, I don't know why they could or couldn't, but it's a little arbitrary. Okay. Now my armor class is significantly improved. Uh, actually, more significantly, more significant than the armor improvement is damage output should be significantly better. I mean, let's look. Oh, well, there's nine. Nine. Oh, that's them doing it to me. <laughs> yeah, seven is good. 12 is good. 13 is quite good. Um, and I'm going to heal Belladonna. I can't remember what my next set of upgrades are. They may not be... I mean, I could. I think I can sink maybe one more halberd? No, maybe not. Because I picked up two and found one. Uh, oh, there's some shield upgrades that I can probably find. Oh, there's my rogue trying to hide and failing at night. I mean, I guess we were in combat already. Maybe I shouldn't be so harsh. She really doesn't know what she's doing with the hiding yet. Back to the review board, <coughs> and time for level ups. We can pray for good stat raises, but it won't help, I don't think. I don't know what god we would pray to. Uh, Tarjan, well, maybe it's a spoiler. Okay, so Griznak is going to try to be reviewed for a level up. We find out Griznak gained one point of luck. Which is actually quite good because um, my luck sucks. Uh, and just for checking, the next level is going to be in another 1000. A point of constitution is fantastic. You can also see the maximum hits go up. Like this 25 under Chanterelle is about to go up. 41, a point of strength on my bard, which will not in the long run matter. But right now, it's quite handy. Dexterity on the rogue. I feel blessed. They, their, uh, her ability to do the special things that rogues do increases with. Well, some of them increase with dexterity. She of course gets harder to hit too. If it's a critical, if it goes over a critical critical threshold, not all improvements help. Um, strong in the arm, gain constitution, also ideal. Basically, I basically at this point in the game. The ideal is sort of everyone gains constitution except for the mages who gain intelligence. That's sort of what I would like. Okay, Tenuviel gains intelligence. Thank you, game. And Stubby gets dexterity. Not so useful. Mages can be attacked by things that care about armor class. Basically, arrows. So heading back out, again, it's nighttime. I think nighttime may already not be very threatening to me. Incidentally, uh, you might notice that 
Strong in the arm went from armor class 6 down to 5. When she gets to be around maybe armor class 3, I'll probably put her up in the front rank. I suppose if I get um, too much experience before I get back to the refugee camp, there'll be no no reason to go in. Oh, I am actually down a few hit points. Uh, and that's a good reminder of of course, why I care about resetting day night. Because it's time to refill stubby spell points. Oh, I keep trying to use the cursor keys, which are actually terrible on this Mac. I really quite like IJKL. Oh, it's, I don't know if I ever got around to finishing that thought. Uh, instead of WASD on this. Um, this game you move with it's kind of it's kind of not what you would expect uh j's left j's turn left r is l is turn right that part makes sense i is move forward but the k is also move forward the difference is i will stop at doors and k will not go th will not stop at doors it seems a little um unimportant but Sometimes you can be in a place in the dungeon where there are walls you cannot see, and some of them have doors in them. And by working this subtlety of movement, you can make an accurate map, which can be quite nice because then, uh, I don't know, you can do things like choose not to go through doors to move across a bunch of confusing space or know there's a door there so later when you see it from the other side uh, without having to cast a light spell at the time. I don't know. It's a little bit edge casey, but like why do you care about the difference between not a door like no wall and a door? Well, I guess the biggest reason is it provides visual confirmation of where you are because you can become confused and not know where you are and when you recognize things um, from your memory or your maps then that neatly um, I don't know it's that whole thing you build a you build a map on paper you build a map on a computer program or you build and you build a map in a he your head and that's a large portion of the experience of playing these games is holding that shape in your mind and using it to advance by knowing the world better. Time to get more ale. How about foul spirits? I think that there's no difference between the different kinds of drinks besides what the barkeep says when you buy them. Um, the barkeep also um, can give you rumors if you give him money. And he has some sort of table where different amounts of money get different slices into the table. That's actually an example of one of those kick mechanics. So this is me. So let me go back. Forward, 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 forward. I stopped at this point, but if I kick with a K, I go through. I don't know if this is just like nostalgia speaking, but somehow I find that satisfying. Oh, time to play a bard song again. There are the useful, useful bard songs. I should so. Uh, show some of them. 
Oh, for example, she just drank, and now she's level 2. So that means um, even though she already played the song, she can play another song. And I'm going to play Bring Around Ballad number 4. Note the condition rank, or column rather, of my party. For example, Belladonna took his 24 hit points, and now she has 25. That song he heals the entire party one hit point per round, I think. Let's Let's buy some more beer and try it out. There's even a little cheat. Um... I don't know if it's correct to call it a cheat, but it sort of feels like a cheat to me. We can do P? Yeah, we can choose to fight ourselves, which is sort of a strange feature. Um, it was designed for monsters that could um, get into your party. You could have scenarios where if you had an empty slot, like, say Stubby's not here, and there's just an empty slot down there. The doppelganger would jump into your party and name itself something like um, Lady Oakshield. And its position in your party would be sort of unpredictable, and you wouldn't know which Lady Oakshield was yours and which was the doppelganger. And um, if you didn't deal with it, it would attack you during your combats with other things. So you would see Lodi Oakshield has attacked Chantrell, and you would still not know which one did it. So to solve the problem, you get in a fight with yourself and, um, I guess, kill one of them and hope it's the right one, or just kill them both. You know, I guess that works. I, I, I don't really know how the mechanic works very well because I never left slots in my party. I just was like, why would you do that? Never, never do that. Um... And I was also really paranoid about them in Bard's Tale 1 and use mean spells on them and stuff. Anyway, but you can choose to fight with yourself, and one of the actions you can take is to defend. So defend, defend, cast the healing Bard song. Oh, I thought I, I thought I drank the beer. Oh, I drank. I usually have my Bard as number four, so I'm pretty sure I'm having Belladonna get really drunk, even though she's not a Bard. L here. Okay, exit. Party attack. Come on. I guess just loading that image. Defend, defend, healing song, and everyone else defend. So this is our fight, quote unquote. And then you can continue and have everyone defend and the magic of the song continues. I could actually um, cast another one of those healing songs. And I think they stack. Yep, they stack. So then I get two points around instead of one. It cost me a beer. I don't know how much these cost. Cause it doesn't tell me. Um, but I think it's like three gold or something. Uh, by comparison, healing with spells is free. But the magic points take a while to come back. And there is a temple that was not destroyed. I'm not sure how that happened. And... Um, it costs 10 gold per hit point healed. Um, so the bard manages to, for it, typically get around, I don't know, some, you know, it depends how many people are wounded, but by the time you're casting the healing song, playing the healing song, probably you're getting around three points per round. So that's in one round one gold for one hit point, and if you have to do a lot more with it, many more hit points per gold. Whereas, um, 
the temple costs 10 gold per hit point. So it's really kind of a bargain. So here we have our first unidentified item, an instrument. What kind of instrument? It's not telling. We're too dumb to recognize the instrument. Maybe we never saw it before. I suppose if you in life saw an unfamiliar instrument, maybe you've never seen a ukulele or some variation on a viola, you might be pretty sure it was instrument, but not exactly sure what it is. So maybe it's not insane. But for some reason, your thief can kind of recognize stuff. Uh, your rogue. Except very badly at first. And the more things you kill, the better you are at identifying trumpets. Hey, no one ever said fantasy games make perfect sense. Okay, um, I think I'm going to take another cut here. Um, we've hit level two, we've found the special building and equipped ourselves. I don't know, maybe we should go to level three. I'm pretty close. Come on, advance. Okay. Miss. Miss. There's at least one hit. It's surprising how much better um, the armor is in practice with small changes. So you have cases where the puma is hitting you most of the time at, say, armor class 3. And then you get to armor class 1 and it feels like it's missing most of the time. I I suppose the um, the variance in the uh, hit rolls may be kind of narrow. Or it may just be bad human perception of probabilities, like usual. But it's definitely true that you get a few more points and then nothing hits you again at all. At least not in this location. Um, no, no, uh, bounded, ac bounded accuracy. Is that what it was called? Bounded, um, whatever that Dungeon Dragons five thing. There's no attempt to constrain the the probabilities. You definitely can become get to a point where you're like these things are no threat at all to me anymore. Let's try leveling up again. See, the old man says nothing special to me this time. Uh, luck for Grisnak, which is kind of good. Luck for Lady Oakshield. Dexterity for Chantrell, which is... Uh, hasn't yet translated into armor class, but eventually it will. Strength for my um, rogue. That is not ideal. Uh, it's not terrible. Intelligence would be terrible. I don't know, maybe intelligence helps for identifying stuff. Definitely terrible for a warrior. Here's my monk, who would love strength or dexterity, and got intelligence, which is terrible. Our class at least went down, that's guaranteed. Okay, Tenuvial gets constitution, which is nice, and strength for stubby, which is terrible. Okay, so, now we get to experience a little bit more of the magic system. Um, my third level magician, I guess it doesn't show the spell levels like it did in some other versions. Anyway, um, at level, Cargo called it from D&D, &D, um, you get access to more powerful spells on odd levels. So a second level spellcaster doesn't get access to any more spells, although they do have more spell points. Um, a third level spellcaster gets access to more spells, but only by kind of asking specially for them. So here we've got 
uh, advancements, spell acquiring, class change, talk to the Elder, and exit guild. We've been doing advancement a lot, now we're going to do spell acquiring. So we see spell acquiring 7, and I can pay a thousand gold to get mage level guild 2, because everything Dungeons & Dragons was a level. Uh, and I don't have enough money for it. Does anyone have enough money? 2, character 3, character 4, no one has enough money. Okay. Okay. More mechanics. Let's go into player seven. And I'm going to press P for pooled gold. And now uh, Stubby, who I think I may rename, um, has all the party's gold and now can afford to be trained. Uh, spell acquiring seven. Uh, sh she'll pay. Oh, I kind of went too fast, and you didn't get to the read the trivial message. But okay, Tanuvia will be trained now for conjurer magic. And the elder teaches you the lore. It's kind of funny because the message was the elders teach you the lore, and they had to edit it because there's no more elders. But it's I don't know. It just feels clunky, but kind of amusing to me. Uh, I guess we can also talk to the elder, but I think all that happens is that he tells you a reminder of what quest you're on. Which in this case is, go kill the guy under the dungeon, damn it. Okay, so we have to move spells, which I'm going to look at. Well, I'm going to look at their codes, because um, that's a way to look at them without looking in the manual. And I'm not going to bring up a PDF and drag it around right now. Um, so, here is Stubby, the magician, I think? Yes. Stubby has n access to the new spells of Holy Water, which is a very short range spell that damages undead. Quite a bit, but a lot of things are not undead, and a lot of times you might want to, if you want to use a spell, you oftentimes want to kill them further away. Um, but, you know, it's a special purpose spell I might sometimes remember to use. We have Mage Gauntlets, which is basically a buffed up verbal plating. It uh, makes a fighter do more damage than they would otherwise for the length of a combat. And we have Area Enchant, which is a very niche um, buff spell. It creates a shortish lived. Um, enchantment that will tell you if you're facing a stairway in a dungeon. It's kind of uh, limited functionality. And that's that's it for her three new spells. Uh, where's Tanuvial? And these spells, by the way, are exactly the same from Bard's Tale 1. Because, again, you're sort of supposed to already have all these levels. But, whatever. Um, uh, Tanuvial... Has a spear, which I didn't remember getting, and I'm going to give it to someone who can actually throw it. Uh, her spells are freeze foes, is what that means, F -R -F -O, and it tries to make a group of monsters not act. So if they fail their saving throw, they don't take damage, they just don't do anything. I pretty much never use this spell. Uh, maybe it's great, I don't know, it just doesn't really come to mind. Uh, the Keel's Magic Compass, which was very memorable at the time because Mako had all of these um, television commercials about fixing auto body damage, and I'm sure probably no one young remembers their existence, but uh, that's I'm pretty sure why it's named this way. And Word of Healing, which is another healing spell, so now both my casters can heal. Um, in case it's not obvious, this game has no equivalent of a priest. Um, there's no concept like that. It, there's no like ho divine caster that's mostly healing, mostly buffs. Uh, in fact, we'll get to it soon, but when your mages get to um, the third spell level, so level 5 in any class, they get to change classes. So my, your conjurer could become a magician, and your magician can become a conjurer, and etc. and there's a whole bunch of mage classes, and, well, typically you just sort of collect all the spells, which has the downside of making your spellcasters sort of the same, 
Uh, but, you know, it's kind of convenient to be like, ah, whatever, I want to cast a spell and you have some points, just do it. Okay, um, I think that's going to be all for this recording. Uh, see you all... Um, <laughs> as if there are all these people who are going to be watching this. Anyway, whatever. Um, if anyone is, uh, I hope you enjoy it, and I kind of hope you don't watch all of it. <laughs> see you.